Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to dive into how you can get started modeling in ComSol Multiphysics by simulating a cooling cup of coffee. There's a couple of steps to building, running, and processing a ComSol model, but we'll start small and go from there. First thing to do is open up your instance of ComSol Multiphysics and navigate to the Model Wizard tab. Then you'll have to select your space dimension. Today we'll work in 2D axisymmetric defining one half of our coffee mug, and then rotating it about an axis of symmetry. Then you'll select your uh, physics. You'll note that Comsol has multiple options for physics, um, but today we're interested in heat transfer, and specifically heat transfer in solids and fluids. I'll double click that to add it to our physics interface, and then move on to study. So I'll select to be time dependent. Again, adding that by double clicking So we'll prompt Comsol to open up the user interface, which would which should look something like this, where our first step will be to define an appropriate length unit for our system. I'll go with millimeters and then zoom out to an XY extent that makes sense for our geometry. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you can define geometries in Comsol if you're not importing a file or something like that. The easiest one is to go to the Sketch tab, select Sketch, and then since we'll be modeling a rectangular coffee mug or a roughly cylindrical coffee mug, um, I can draw bounds that make sense. The first one to be just the outside of our coffee mug. Um, the second one to capture what the interior profile looks like, um, estimating a uh, width of about five millimeters um, along the wall and 10 millimeters along the base. And then I'll add in a third rectangle, this time just to delineate uh, the coffee in the cup from the air above it. If I step out of sketch, you'll note now that we have three distinct domains, each corresponding to the uh, one of those three mug, uh, water, or air components. And uh, I'll just go through each one of their properties and make sure that the size and shape makes sense. From a priori knowledge, a uh, coffee mug is about 40 millimeters in radius, 90 millimeters in height, so that checks out. Uh, and has a, a wall thickness of about 5 millimeters and a, um, a base of about um, 10 millimeters. So everything looks good and we can move on to defining our materials. So we'll add the first two of those, water and air, from Comsol's built-in materials library by double-clicking. And we'll note that the first material uh, is applied over the entire domain. And then as we add in subsequent ones, say the air at the top of our mug, um, then that'll take away from the initial one. We'll add one last material to uh, capture the mug, uh, but this time we'll import a blank material. We'll title it Ceramic, and we'll click on the uh, mug profile here. This will prompt you for uh, a couple of material properties, the first of which being thermal conductivity, which is going to be about 3.8 watts per meter Kelvin density of around 1100 kilograms per meter cubed, and we'll set a specific heat capacity of around 850 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Once you've imported those, you've run all three green checks. Uh, all of our domains should be um, selected, and we can move on to heat transfer um, and define our appropriate initial and boundary conditions. So the first thing to note is just like when we were defining our materials, um, we need to select where the solids and where the fluids are in our model. We have one solid being the mug, um, and then two fluids, one the coffee itself, and one the air above it. Now we'll select our initial values, and currently console setting each domain to be 293 degrees Kelvin, um, or 
we could rather we could say 20 degrees C. We'll also add in a, another initial value or initial condition, but this time setting the coffee to a piping 90 degrees Celsius. And for now, we'll leave a thermal insulation boundary on the outside um, before moving on to meshing. So as Comptel is a finite element solver, it builds a mesh for every single uh, model that you import or geometry that you put in, um, where each vertex in the mesh here, uh, pretty finely packed, corresponds to a point where the solver will um, calculate temperature uh, over time. We'll stick with fine for today um, and then move on to our study window where we'll select output times. So since cooling is a pretty slow process, we'll select a time unit of minutes before moving on to define our output times of say every minute or every five minutes over a course of two hours. Console will solve at each one of those time points uh, or at time points in between those, but the output times are the data that it stores for post-processing. Once you've done that, you can click Compute, close out of the Add Material window, and then you can see the Progress tab at the bottom here showing how quickly Comsol will churn through that. And we're met with a um, 3D temperature surface plot, um, or a surface plot of our, our geometry. Um, first thing to note, though, is that our color bar here um, has a very small range, and that's because Comsol will automatically pick bounds for any kind of color range. Um, this can be a bit of a... a, a this can present some problems if you're not careful or at least cognizant of it. Um, so what we'll do instead of letting console automatically set that is manually fix our bounds uh, between 90 or between 20 and 90 degrees Celsius. We'll also select our unit under the expression here <clears throat> as degrees Celsius and then replot um, our surface plot. And you'll note that after two hours, um, our system really hasn't cooled at all. Um, the reason being that our thermal insulation prevented any heat from escaping or entering into the system with time. So we'll step through that model one more time, but now we'll add in a temperature boundary condition. Um, which we can define as 20 degrees Celsius, corresponding to about ambient temperature. Um, and we'll apply that to each point along our outer boundary. Um, if you have a really complex geometry, you can also just select all boundaries um, and then deselect. But either will get you to where you want to go. Our mesh will stay the same, and we'll run our time-dependent study one more time. And now after two hours, our coffee mug is completely cooled, um, which is more in line with our intuition. To see how that temperature profile evolves with time, you can either manually click through um, under the, the data set for your, your temperature. You can click animation in the top right so that Comsol put together a quick movie for you. Or if you're looking for a more quantitative take on it, you can select a 2D cut point by clicking on data sets underneath results. So results, data sets, right click, cut point 2D, and then selecting a point somewhere along your geometry. So I'll pick a radius along our axis of symmetry and a z-value of around 50 millimeters. Hitting plot, I can see where that cut point is. 
And now by right-clicking on results, I can import a 1D plot group. I'll call this cut point 2D or cut point graph. Select our data set as our cut point at every single time selection. And then right-click one more time to add in a point graph. Put plot. And we can see how the temperature evolves at that particular time point um, or at that particular point in space with time. One last thing that you might be interested in doing is seeing um, if you're interested in more than just a single point in space uh, and you want to say plot the average temperature of a given volume or domain, you can do that by going back to the data sets sub tab under results, um, clicking on study one or solution one, uh, and then right clicking to make a selection. So instead of the entire geometry, now we'll just select our, um, our coffee. We'll make a revolution uh, from the coffee alone. And then under derived values, we can right click, mouse over to average, volume average, um, and then hit evaluate. This will calculate the average temperature within our coffee at every single point in time um, and export that to a table under the tables tab um, or in the bottom right hand corner of your user interface. If you'd like to plot that, um, you can click on table graph, which will then show that average temperature with time. Um, and so finally, um, there's going to be times where you want to model something with uh, varying start conditions, material properties, geometric designs, uh, or the relationship between any and all of those independent variables. Um, to show how to do that, we'll run through this model one more time, but now investigating the effect of varying our coffee cup's density and air temperature, the ambient air temperature on cooling profile. To do that, um, I'll go at the very top of the model builder to global definitions and I'll define two variables. One, the density of the mug, row mug, which we previously set as 1100 kilograms per meters cubed. I'll also select another one called TAM or T, uh, ambient temperature, which again we previously set at 20 degrees Celsius. Now, uh, if I open back up our ceramic, um, instead of leaving a, a, um, a raw value hard-coded in there, now I can select the parameter from before, row mug. And likewise, under our heat transfer and solids and fluids tab, I can set our initial values corresponding to T ambient. Um, and our temperature boundary corresponding also to T ambient. Then under a study tab, I'll right click, go to parametric sweep, and add in our um, two parameters where I can then define, say, how different densities will affect uh, the cooling profile with time, as well as how different air temperatures will. So if we had an 18, 20, 25 degree Celsius ambient air, how will that affect our solution? Let's find out. We'll click Compute. Um, after specifying all combinations, pardon, um, we'll click Compute, and then I'll mouse over to the Progress tab in console to show how that progress um, is going along. Is a bit of a sanity check. You can also click on convergence plot to see how quickly COMSOL is converging to a solution uh, for each one of the tested conditions. What this plot shows is the number of steps the solver has to take at each individual time point um, to get to a meaningful solution. And then once COMSOL is done, 
computing those. We can go um, to our cut point data set from before. And instead of using the uh, single solution data set, we can use the parametric one before coming back to our cut point graph and seeing how each one of those um, variables affected the temperature profile with time. Um, to make a little bit more sense out of this, you can also um, select legends and show legends before um, manipulating your plot uh, so that you can make the most sense out of it. And lastly, if you'd like to export that data to some place to make a little bit more sense out of it, you can right click on your point graph um, and then uh, either copy the plot data to a table um, or you can um, export the data um, itself uh, from the table. So you can select add plot data to export um, and then set your file destination. So in conclusion, uh, in, this, in this introduction, we walk through how to define geometries in COMSOL, um, how to import custom materials and materials from COMSOL's built-in library, how to define initial and boundary conditions for heat transfer physics, uh, how to mesh your geometry, and how to run a time-dependent and parametric study, as well as how to plot a um, temperature plot, a surface plot, um, a 2D cut point, and the average volume of a domain. This concludes this introduction to ComSol Multiphysics. Thank you.